The other day, Ted Kremenick, manager of the Languages and Runtimes team at Apple, tweeted out on the road to Swift 6. And it's this nice uh, forum post here on Swift uh, forums.swift.org, uh, all about the pathway to Swift 6. And that's what we're going to talk about today. So Ted opens up talking about how you know the Swift project has achieved critical milestone and maturity of the core fundamentals. Um, basically, how we got you know ABI module stability uh, in the past couple of releases, and now Swift package managers built into Xcode. Essentially, what he's saying. Is is, you know, the Swift is starting to mature and it's nice to see the path that it's on. However, this forum post is all about Swift 6 and more about where we're going uh, after a quick recap of what we've just accomplished. Um, so the first thing is accelerate growth of the Swift software ecosystem. Uh, here in, in their words says, together we, the Swift community, are working to build a programming language to empower everyone to turn their ideas, here's the big thing, uh, into apps on any platform. So essentially what this part is about is expanding Swift beyond just developing for Apple platforms. And the key points here are, like I just said, expand the number of platforms where Swift is available and supported. That's great news. I get uh, questions all the time from people that are just learning Swift, and they often ask like, hey, is, you know, is this a good investment in my future for learning? Well, here you can hear it right from the source. Uh, the plan is to expand Swift beyond Apple platforms uh, into many others. Uh, improve how software is written in Swift installed and deployed. Uh, here's the thing, support cross-platform tooling, uh, such as a language uh, server protocol, code formatting, refactoring, Swift package manager. Uh, what this means is other IDEs, uh, you know, maybe like Sublime or Atom, uh, can now support Swift. You'll get syntax highlighting and all that stuff. Uh, so you can use Swift, again, on other platforms. And then finally, you know, cultivate a rich open source library ecosystem. Now, number two uh, on the road to Swift 6 is to create a fantastic development experience. This is great news, obviously, right? We want to have a good developer experience, and that's what they're working on right now. It says uh, there are major investments currently underway to improve the core developer experience, you know, faster builds, uh, more informative and accurate diagnostics. This is coming in Swift 5.2. Basically, what that means is uh, easier to understand error messages to help you solve those errors. So hopefully this will limit the number of really cryptic error messages in Xcode. So you're like, wait, what, what does this mean? Uh, so that's going to get better. Responsive code completion, we all like that. Uh, reliable and fluid debugging experiences. And here's the, the big thing they talk about. These are crucial endeavors and they represent the most engineering work happening right now on the Swift project. So most of the focus is on improving the developer experience at the current moment. And it says uh, they will remain area of focus until these are nothing short of excellent. So good news, focusing on developer experience. We all love to hear that. And then number three here, invest in user empowering language directions. Uh, our goals for Swift are ambitious. We wanna make programming simple things easy and difficult things possible. I think the focus here is on this second part, like difficult things possible. And talk about how you wanna use, uh, you know, refine Swift's implementation capabilities to allow it to be used for low level systems programming. That's good. Uh, and important domains like services and machine learning. Uh, for those that don't know, Chris Latner, who, you know, helped usher in Swift, helped create Swift, uh, is over at Google working on TensorFlow and machine learning. Um, so it's great having somebody so involved in Swift working on machine learning there over at TensorFlow. So uh, there you go, machine learning. And then you wanna provide excellent solutions for major language features such as memory ownership and concurrency. And then they talk a little bit about supporting these investments, what they're gonna do, welcoming more people onto the Swift core team. Uh, here we have Salim, who uh, is the primary instigator behind porting Swift to Windows. So you get Swift up and running on Windows, that's a pretty big deal. So now Salim is part of the core team uh, focusing on that. And then also Tom Doran has uh, joined the team, you know, beyond his work at Apple on creating Swift Neo. Uh, he's a primary organizer of Swift server work group. So more focus on server side Swift. Uh, so again, Swift on Windows, machine learning, server side Swift. You can see how Swift is growing and expanding. So a good look for the future, in my opinion. Of course, we have to see how all this will play out, if it will actually play out that way. I believe it will, uh, but exciting nonetheless. And then finally here, the path to Swift 6. Like when is Swift 6 actually going to come out? I love this answer. Uh, we'll get to that in a second. But currently, uh, they're working on Swift 5.2. Uh, should be released relatively soon. They'll be working on that for uh, a little bit. It says, we are likely to see a succession of Swift 5.x releases. So we're going to see 5.3, 5.4. And it says, uh, each of these releases will be a major release in their own right. So it's going to take a little bit to get to Swift 6. And, and that's the plan. Uh, here you see in the summary, it says, instead of announcing a specific timeline for Swift 6, like, you know, they're not going to say, hey, WWDC 2021, Swift 6, and then you have to like rush to that deadline 
And then, because they've done that in the past, right? They were releasing new Swifts every WWDC. And then inevitably, like some features would have to get held back because you're, you're working towards this arbitrary timeline. So basically what they're saying here is we're no longer going to work towards these uh, specific timelines. Uh, basically says the plan is for the community to be a part of seeing these efforts progress uh, with focused efforts and goals. And here's the big thing. And we release Swift 6 when those efforts culminate. Basically, when it's ready, which I love that answer. Like, you know, one of the knocks on Swift has been it's been changing constantly because it is such a young language. So no need to rush releases, just when it's ready. And I love that answer. And it says it's going, it'll be an exciting journey and I'm proud to be part of this community that will make it happen. Uh, again, I love that answer. That's the roadmap to Swift 6. And if you want to dig further, there's a whole... You know, this is a forum post, so there's a whole discussion here. Like, I'm scrolling down. <laughs> it's pretty long if you really want to dive into uh, more information about the roadmap to Swift 6. But that's what I wanted to share today, more information about Swift 6. Uh, I'm excited. Um, but, hey, it'll come out when it's ready. All right, we'll see you in the next video.